I played video games growing up just like most people, but I was never as much of an outright gamer compared to most of my friends and family members. I had like maybe five games I owned growing up compared to my siblings who would collect way more. But one of the popular video games I did spend hours upon hours playing while growing up was the 2005 video game Star Wars Battlefront 2. Growing up, I was a big Star Wars fan for both the original and prequel movies, so despite not being into most popular shooter games at the time, a Star Wars themed one made all the difference. My favorite part of the game was this mode called Galactic Conquest, which could be either single player or two player if you had a friend over. In Galactic Conquest playing as either the Clones vs Droids or Rebels vs Empire, you had a map of the Star Wars galaxy with some planets under your control and others under the enemy's control. You'd move your ship around conquering planets while your enemy would do the same, until eventually one side controls the entire galaxy. Whenever you'd move to a planet or moon, you'd briefly zoom into it before starting the match, and every once in a while I'd notice that some of the planets or moons looked a bit familiar. Like, I'd swear that a lake or a coastline looked like a real lake or a coastline, but either zoomed in or tilted or something. However, between the lower resolution of 2000s TVs and the added layers for clouds to cover the planets, it wasn't really something I could always confirm. Not to mention many of these planets take a few minutes to fully rotate, and you kind of just want to get to the fun fighting part of the game. By the time Battlefront 2 was on Steam and I played it on my laptop or PC, I realized that I wasn't crazy. There were a number of real-life locations being copy-pasted onto the planet or moon textures. At least some of them. In fact, some of them even seem to be a weird collage of multiple places rather than just one, almost like pattern on Christmas wrapping paper or pajamas or something like that, where you have a background palette of colors for the surface, but then you just randomly copy and paste a pattern of lakes and coastlines facing different directions and stuff. Then once it's used for a round planet, just add some clouds and most people probably won't notice. Especially when, like I said, they usually just glance at it for three seconds before clicking to start the match. While I had thought about making a video on this before, EA's more recent Battlefront games kind of took the spotlight for a bit and I kind of moved on. But with the recent rather disaster release of the original Battlefronts 1 and 2 games under the so-called Classic Collection on Steam, the original games are once again in the spotlight, even if out of anger rather than joy. I tried to see if somehow the planet textures for the planets were online, and I couldn't find any, so I had to base these off of what I could observe from in-game. Since I didn't work on the game, it is entirely possible that some maps used real-life places while others were genuinely made up. The truth is, there are hundreds of thousands of lakes out there, and a virtually infinite number of potential coastlines they could have zoomed in on. Even if I spent years on it, I'd probably never be able to find them all. So I figured I'd make five categories of locations. Not shown, no hidden maps, possible hidden maps, confirmed hidden maps, and Geonosis. Yeah, Geonosis gets its own category, I'll explain why when I get there. Some places may kind of fit into more than one category, you'll see what I mean later, but that's roughly how I'm gonna divide the video. Also, space maps do not count because the planets you see below when fighting dogfights in space not only do not match the ones in Galactic Conquest, but they're even lower quality and clearly not based off of anything real. First, let's get the most simple category out of the way, not shown. There are a few Battlefront 2 locations that are playable in instant action but are not featured in Galactic Conquest. Therefore, you don't see what the planets look like, at least not in this game. So that means the Xbox exclusive planets of Bespin and Renvar go in that category, then you also have the Death Star and the Tantive 4 ship, which are not only absent from Galactic Conquest, but aren't even planets or moons to begin with. Next, we've got the planets which I am 99 to 100% sure have no hidden maps, and that's because they're mostly the singular biome-style locations. Coruscant? It's a city planet, it's just a city-state the size of a planet. There's no lakes, islands, anything. Hoth at first I thought might have had something, but the more I look at it the more I'm convinced that this is just a zoomed-in picture of the side of a snow-covered mountain. The areas that look like water match the dark bluish color that you would see on a mountain, and also doesn't give off any shape that makes sense for a coastline, but definitely matches the random scatteredness of snow on a mountain. So maybe it's a mountain, maybe it's not, but in terms of hidden maps, I'm convinced that there's nothing here. Meanwhile, Mustafar looks like it could have been the same, but with lava flow instead. Maybe there's a weird illusion going on by changing the color palettes, but I'm not convinced that there's anything here either. 
Then finally, Polis Massa is just an asteroid. Yeah. In terms of the more debatable planets, I'll skip those for now and get to the planets where I have found at least one confirmed hidden map on. Like I said with the pajama pattern metaphor, many of these use multiple unrelated locations and put them next to each other, so some of these I could only name parts of it but not all of it. If you notice any of the parts I'm missing, by all means point it out in the comments so I can kick myself over it later. Endor. Endor was a bit tricky because, firstly, whenever I approached it in Galactic Conquest, it would never zoom in super close. Yes, I know it's a small moon and not a planet, but other moons get closer zooms than this one. Secondly, for the longest time, I had no idea what the lakes I could see on there were. The main, thinner lake looked very familiar, yet looking at various satellite maps of different parts of the world, it didn't seem to match anything. Since there are hundreds of thousands of lakes and it didn't match any of the bigger famous ones, I was almost close to putting this one in the mystery category. But then as a last ditch effort, I remembered that Endor and Return of the Jedi was filmed in the California Redwoods. And of course Hollywood and many other gaming companies are out in California too. So I looked at smaller local California lakes and I discovered that this smaller lake right here is Mono Lake in California. That's not where the Redwoods are, or Hollywood, but it's still California. However, the real Mono Lake is not next to any thin, larger lake like this one, and it bothered me that the most prominent lake on this map looked so familiar, yet I couldn't place it. But then last minute I realized that this wasn't a natural lake, but a reservoir lake. This main lake is in fact Lake Mead, the lake created as the result of the Hoover Dam. It looks a bit more flooded on the southeastern end, but most of it is an exact match to its traditional outline. I guess they just changed the deserty colors to green or something, so yeah, Bendor is Las Vegas apparently. Kashyyyk Kashyyyk felt like Endor on steroids, where various features looked so familiar yet I couldn't place a match on anything. I thought this one bit could have been a warped Sicily or Tasmania, but upon closer inspection that was definitely not the case. What makes it more difficult is the fact that the colors of the surrounding locations don't help. Lake Mead is supposed to be in a deserty area, yet it was colored in green because it was used for Endor. Eventually I was able to figure out that at least half of this planet is a zoomed in area of the Caucasus region. Here you can see a zoomed in coastline of Azerbaijan on the Caspian Sea, and as it rotates you'll see the Mingachevir Reservoir Lake in Azerbaijan, and then Lake Sivan in Armenia. I can't figure out the areas past that, but hey, after how long I spent staring at this I'm glad I got at least half of it. Naboo. Ha, ah, Naboo. Home of a corrupt politician who would end up leading an empire. Well, it's only fitting that Naboo is just a zoomed in coastline of the mid Atlantic area of the United States, but tilted 90 degrees to the left. You can see the coast of North Carolina, Virginia, Delaware, and Maryland, including the large opening of the Potomac River that leads to where Washington, D.C. is at. Then it rotates up to around New Jersey's coastline before eventually starting all over in North Carolina as the texture wraps upon itself. I'm not sure if this is an intentional location for Naboo, but that's pretty funny, honestly. Utapau. Believe it or not, Utapau reuses the mid-Atlantic coastline, but now it's flipped and reversed. While it's a bit harder to tell with the planet text box over it, you can still see the Potomac River right there, and then everything else kind of comes into place. There's also some other lake here, but I can't clearly tell what it is. Overall, it's mostly the same texture. I shouldn't be too surprised that they would reuse a texture for this. Again, you're looking at this for three seconds before moving on, but I almost kind of felt disappointed. Yavin 4 This one perhaps was the most blatantly obvious of all the locations, because the fourth moon of Yavin is apparently the Persian Gulf. Like, that's not even trying, it's literally the Persian Gulf right there. This was the first one I noticed as a kid, easily the most recognizable. But upon looking at it more while making this video, I did discover that as it wrapped around, it also had a tilted Caspian Sea on it, which extends to where the United Arab Emirates coastline starts on the Persian Gulf side. I know we've already established that the climate doesn't match the locations and all, so I guess I shouldn't expect there to be a connection between the hidden maps and the lore of the planet itself, but Yavin 4 is kind of like space Yucatan with its own rainforest and Mayan style ruins, which is almost the opposite of the Persian Gulf or the Caspian Steppes, but hey, it is what it is. After those five planets, there are six planets that I put in a toss-up mystery type of category. Maybe they're based off of real maps, maybe they're legitimately made up, maybe it's a mix, I don't know. 
For Tatooine and Mygito, I actually noticed that they appeared to have the same texture map used, but at slightly different zooms. Tatooine, of course, being more desert-y in color. This main lake looked so familiar to me, but I was never able to quite figure it out if it was a real lake or not. I thought maybe it was a weirdly stretched Lake Nipigon in Canada, but that didn't quite match. If anyone figures it out, please post it in the comments, it's driving me crazy. Dagobah similarly looked familiar, especially with this rectangular-ish lake. It reminded me of a lot of rectangular lakes, but none of them quite matched. So maybe it's a smaller one and I missed it. Volusia was weird because it's designed to look like a bunch of smaller lakes, and yet zoomed out you can almost see the outline of a larger lake, which makes me think it's some weird texture on top of a real lake, or reservoir, or something. But with the way the texture is, it makes me hard to see what the precise shape is. Camino, meanwhile, I considered putting in the No Hidden Maps category because it's water. It's pretty much all water. But eventually you do see some atoll-like islands, which makes me wonder if maybe this is a specific tiny Pacific or Indian Ocean island. Since there are literally tens of thousands of these islands, I didn't really bother. But who knows, maybe you'll figure it out. Now the last planet in Battlefront 2 has its own category, Geonosis. Geonosis is a hidden map of sorts, but not of Earth. Geonosis is actually Mars, but not all of Mars. I feel like if they just used Mars with an asteroid ring around it, it wouldn't really be a hidden map per se, it would just be lazy. But in this case, it's a specific part of Mars. I noticed that the craters in the darker regions that you see on Geonosis specifically match to this central part of Mars, minus being slightly lower quality. But hey, this game is almost two decades old. And with that, that's all the hidden maps in the original Star Wars Battlefront 2. At least all the ones that I could find. Hope you enjoyed this more unusual kind of map video. Maybe I'll do a future video on other games that are based on real maps in some form. Until then, I'm Emperor Tiger Star, and I'll see you guys next time.